So Distant Horizons is now in beta and feature complete. Do you still need Invidium and should you even bother using it? I'll cover all of that and more in this quick video. In my previous video, I showed you the latest update to Distant Horizons, which adds fantastic new features and support, most importantly, for multiplayer chunk loading, sharing, and things like that. It's a fantastic, huge update pushing Distant Horizons into beta. And unlike Distant Horizons, which is constantly being updated every other month or so, as you can see here, it's been quite some time since Invidium Videom's last update six months ago. While you can still technically use these two together, like I showed you in this video from 11 months ago, I don't really think you need to bother, and we'll get into that now. If you wish to run it Distant Horizons with the latest version of NVIDIA, here's how you do it. Before we get into it though, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you're looking to set up a fantastic Minecraft server to start exploring the Distant Horizons with your friends, in the description down below you'll find a link to this page. Apex Hosting provide super low latency, powerful DDoS protection, fantastic support, automated backups, and many other features. Simply clicking the link down below, checking the current coupon code in the top right, it's Apex25 at the moment, for 25% off your first invoice, you can click Get Started, choose your Minecraft version or any other game for that matter. Adam, customize your server as you see fit, order now, and in no time, you'll have your own Minecraft server that you can set up Distant Horizons on to start exploring them with your friends. A huge shout out to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. First of all, download Fabric, you'll find a link down below, choose Download for Windows, and open the Fabric Installer. From here, on the Client tab, we'll need to make sure that the version we get is compatible with NVIDIA. So, from NVIDIA's Modrinth page, I'll choose Download, then select a game version, and the latest version version is 1.21.1. I'll download this for Fabric in the meanwhile, as such, and we'll install Fabric for version 1.21.1. Choose install and wait for it to finish. Then you'll be prompted to download Fabric API. Click this link over here or the next link down below. You'll be taken to CurseForge, but the link down below is for Modrinth. Simply choose download on either page, then select game version 1.21.1 and choose download. Then from the Fabric installer, choose mods here, which will open up your Minecraft mods folder. You can get here with start and R or Windows key and R to bring up this window, type in percentage app data percentage backslash dot Minecraft and hit enter, which will take you to your Minecraft folder. Just open the mods folder over here. If there isn't one, create one. Inside of here, we'll be dropping both Fabric API for 1.21.1 and NVIDIA. So I'll just move them from my downloads folder into here. And now we're almost ready to play. For NVIDIA to work, we need to download Sodium as well. You'll find a link to this down below once more. From here, instead of choosing download in the top right, we need to download a very particular version of this. Head to the versions tab, then under game versions, select 1.21.1. Then inside of here, we're looking for exactly Sodium version 0.5.11. That's the latest version of Sodium that NVIDIA supports. In the future, this may be updated, in which case just download the latest version here. Scroll down, head to page two if you don't see it, and here we should find version 0.5.11. Choose download, and now we can add this to our mods folder as well. Now, the final mod we need is Indium, which you'll also find a link to down below. Even though it's not required for 0.6 and above, we're using 0.5, so we do need it. Choose download in the top right, select a game version 1.21.1, fabric, and download. Once more, add this file to your mods folder. Now that we've got everything set up for NVIDIA, let's download Distant Horizons as well. The latest version of Distant Horizons does actually support 1.21.1 and a couple of other versions too. So I'll choose download from the Distant Horizons page, select game version 1.21.1 and we'll download for fabric. Download. All that's left to do now is move it into our mods folder as such and now we're ready to play. The only annoying thing was downloading the particular version of Sodium which also needed Indium but again if NVIDIA updates you'll need to just download the latest version of Sodium and you won't need Indium at all. To start it up inside of my Minecraft launcher I'll then select Fabric Loader 1.21.1 from the versions list and play. You can customize it as usual to add more RAM and things like that. Once your game starts up, you shouldn't see any errors 
And if you do, most likely it's because you downloaded the latest version of Sodium and not 0.5.11. That's how you fix that simple error. Once your game actually starts up, you'll see it says Fabric Modded. We can head into single player, generate a new world if we wish. I'll do this in creative mode and let's go with something a bit more crazy like Amplified. We'll create our world and there we have it. Once we're in game, you'll see that the world should slowly start expanding around you. And with the current default settings with world generation for distant horizons, we won't actually need to fly around to load any chunks and things like that, which can't be said about NVIDIA. So if I pause the game, head into options, followed by distant horizons, you'll see by default, chunk rendering is set to true, allergy chunk render distance is usually 256, quality preset is medium, and CPU load is aggressive. You can crank this up to start generating chunks even faster in the distance, and you can see as things start to grow. Currently, what we're looking at here is distant horizons. NVIDIA isn't doing anything as we haven't traveled anywhere just yet. If we just quickly head into distant horizons and turn it off, this is my default render distance. So there's not too much going on here. Distant horizons, however, is doing a huge amount of work in the background, letting us see super far. This is fantastic. And if you wish, you could have also installed Iris to use shader packs as well. However, NVIDIA still does not support shader packs at all. So if you wish to use NVIDIA, you can't use any shaders. Or if you need shaders, don't even bother downloading NVIDIA in the first place. NVIDIA really starts to shine when you look at the quality of chunks that you currently have loaded. I think Minecraft's just a bit sluggish because we're generating huge amplified chunks, whereas normal chunks wouldn't have this sort of issue. NVIDIA starts to shine when you look at the quality of blocks within your render distance and the quality of blocks outside. However, since Distant Horizons entered beta, the quality of chunks and the blending between actual chunks and Distant Horizons chunks has been smoothed out and improved a huge amount. So ultimately, at this distance, especially with shaders turned off, I can't really tell the difference between Distant Horizons chunks and normal Minecraft chunks. Try and guess yourself, I'll give you a few seconds. Now, turning off Distant Horizons, this is how far we can actually see. Could you tell the difference? Probably not. However, Distant Horizons, of course, in amplified biomes and things like that, does actually cause our system to chug quite a bit. Most of it's to do with actually generating the chunks, and once that's done, our performance should improve quite a bit. But for now at least, if we head into Options, Distant Horizons, you'll see the quality preset by default is medium. If we crank this up, it'll use more VRAM in our graphics card, needing a much more high-powered system. Ultimately, medium is as good as you'll need to go pretty much at all. However, if you crank this down to medium, you'll load much lower quality chunks in the distance, and you can definitely notice the difference here. Obviously, this is exaggerated quite a bit. You wouldn't really be playing on the lowest setting unless you have a really low-powered system. As you can see, my performance is no longer 30-something frames, I'm getting 60 to 80, which is a big improvement. And obviously, on top of that, the Distant Horizons chunks look super weird because we are playing in an amplified biome. That being said, if we start to fly around, NVIDIA starts remembering where all of these blocks are that we currently have loaded. You can see them pop in in the distance as Minecraft renders them instead of only Distant Horizons. However, if we turn around, everything that NVIDIA loaded is still there in full quality. So NVIDIA is working and so is Distant Horizons. This is obviously super exaggerated. And if your PC can handle playing with anything above low quality, which this is low quality. So if you're playing with medium, which is this, I really wouldn't recommend bothering with NVIDIA at all. Distant Horizons has very much surpassed the need for NVIDIA at all. If you're gonna be using the default settings or better is completely pointless. So you can skip needing NVIDIA at all if you're planning on playing with Distant Horizons at all. Switching over to a regular world with medium LOD for Distant Horizons, performance is much better and it looks just as good. Not to mention the huge downfall of NVIDIA is that unlike Distant Horizons, I'll put this on the lowest setting for now, in order to actually load NVIDIA chunks, and see the world in a higher quality, you actually need to travel over these chunks to load them at least once every time you connect to a server and things like that. All of these chunks need to be rendered and remembered on your system when you join a server to play on it. So yeah, 
Ultimately, personally, I would completely skip out on Nvidium. You don't need it at all with the latest version of Distant Horizons, which is fantastic. So thanks to the viewer who asked this question. Hopefully this video answered it for you and of course, many other people. It's great that we need fewer mods installed on our system, especially when the quality of a handful of them are improving so much in leaps and bounds. That being said, does this older version of Minecraft still work with the new Distant Horizons multiplayer features if we join a 1.21.1 server? Well, let's answer that real quick. Using a 1.21.1 server I set up in a previous video, in the mods folder, I've only dropped Distant Horizons and Fabric API, which I just copied the latest versions of which from my mods folder, or you can download them from their websites once more. I'll fire up this server here and we'll start to generate the actual world. Then we can join it and see if things work as expected. So here, multiplayer will join our local server in just a moment. There we go, 1.21.1, join. Entering flight here, Distant Horizons is slowly generating more. So I'll sit around and wait for just a moment for it to get a bit further. That being said, it's not actually my game client generating the Distant Horizons chunks, or at least not entirely by itself. It's actually the server itself itself generating chunks around every player. And you can see so because in the world folder of the server, inside of the data folder, we have a slowly growing distant horizons.sqlite file, which is a database containing all of the distant horizons chunks for our server. So if we join it with a completely different client, they'll pretty much instantly start downloading distant horizons chunks and they'll be able to see into the distance without needing to generate it themselves at all. So let's sit around and wait for just a moment and see where things go. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Hopefully you found this video useful, if not interesting, and I also hope it answered your questions if you're planning on doing exactly this. You now know how to do it if you wish to go through with it, and you also have reasons to not and save yourself some extra performance overhead. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.